Okay, we will discuss something about helix. The earlier two cusps, what we have discussed is cycloid as well as involute. They were two dimensional curves. Now, when I tell helix, helix obviously is a three dimensional curve which has got depth also. By definition, helix is the locus of a point which is moving on the lateral surface of a cylinder or a cone. What we will take first cylinder only? On the lateral surface of a cylinder with uniform linear velocity as well as angular velocity. So, whatever I have shown over here a cylinder and the path of the point, a point has to move on the lateral surface, the surrounding surface for a cylinder whatever I have shown this is a top plane surface, circular surface, bottom plane surface, circular surface, the surrounding surface for a cylinder is curved surface. According to our definition, the path traced by a point which is moving on the lateral surface of a cylinder with uniform linear as well as angular velocity. That means point has to move upwards also and point has to move around the cylinder also. There are two motions. While looking from top, it should appear that the point is going around the cylinder and when you look from the front, it should appear that point is going upward also. That means this point is moving with two, two motions, one is the upward motion, the other one is the circular motion. As both are uniform, every instance it has to move by equal distance. If I take for this cylinder, the total angular, if I want to draw, I will take a problem. A point is moving around the lateral surface of a cylinder, 40 mm diameter. Let us take the diameter of the cylinder is 40 mm and advances in axial direction by 80 mm. That means this is the axial direction. When looking from top, this is the axis of the cylinder and the total vertical height which has to move is 80 mm. Draw the locus of the point and name the curve. Obviously, according to our definition, as the point is moving around the cylinder with uniform linear and angular velocity, the curve what I am going to trace is an helix. It is like this, if I go for a pictorial representation, a cylinder has been kept, the point has to start from somewhere lower point and it has to go around the cylinder, let us take for one complete turn and it has to reach the top point. It has to move with uniform linear as well as angular velocity. While looking from top, it has to take a turn and while looking from front, it has to move upwards. So for that, if I take the total angle which has to go around is 360 degrees and the total linear travel is around 80 mm, that is the axial advance. What are the distance covered in one complete revolution? The distance travelled in one complete revolution is called as pitch of the helix or lead of the helix. Here we are supposed to draw a helix wherein the pitch is equal to the height of the cylinder. To start with little bit of engineering knowledge required whatever orthography projection. If I see the cylinder from top if I look it will look like a circle like this. The same cylinder if I look from front it has to look like a rectangle. To start with the solution for this problem, the required diameter for the cylinder is 40 mm that is radius is 20 mm and the direction the point has to go axial by 80 mm. Obviously, the height of the cylinder has to be 80 mm. The same one if I look from this direction, it appears like a circle, that circle I have to draw and while looking from front, it has to appear like a rectangle that I have to draw. To get this path, as I told, the curve has got depth also. It's three-dimensional curve. It's not put on a plain paper similar to involute or cyclone. Involute and cyclone are drawn on a single plane. But this curve is drawn on a curved surface of a cylinder. The curve moves on the front side as well as the back side. Here, what I have shown is the front side part of the curve, helical curve, which can be seen. When I move the curve on the back side, it will be shown by dotted line. It's as simple as just we are making an ant. So, I have kept an ant over here. The ant is somewhere over here and the food for the ant is kept somewhere on the top side. And if I guide the ant to go around the cylinder, the ant has to go around the cylinder for one complete round and reach on the top. Obviously, the ant moves with uniform velocity. Every stage 
and it is going around the cylinder. First half turn, it can be seen as it is on the front side of the cylinder. As it moves on the back side, the ant cannot be seen. At the end, the ant will be somewhere over here to reach the top. The path traced by the ant is nothing but the helix, just going around the cylinder. For drawing this, I cannot draw a three-dimensional sketch. To show the curve, I will go for a two-dimensional sketch. First, I will show how the cylinder looks at the top. Obviously, it looks like a circle. And while looking from top, the curve simply is around this circle only. And while looking from front, I can easily trace the part of the curve, the front side of the curve as well as the back side of the curve. And as the requirement is uniform, angular as well as linear velocity. That means every instance the curve has to go by the equations. If I go by, if I take the cylinder as 8 divisions, obviously I have to take here also 8 divisions. Every 45 degrees it has to achieve some height. And at the end of 360 degrees it has to achieve the complete height reaching on the top. For that I have drawn a circle as I told looking from top it looks like a circle. I have drawn a circle looking from front it looks like a rectangle. I have drawn a rectangle and the height of the rectangle I have taken 80. I have taken 8 divisions on the angular turn I have taken 8 divisions that is 360 by 8 that is 45 degrees and the linear travel that is it has to go up by 80 mm that also if I take 80 by 8 it will be 10 mm each that means here divisions are taken at 45 degrees to get 8 divisions and here the divisions are taken at 10 mm to get 8 divisions. To start with let us feel that this end or the path I have to trace a point this point is actually nothing but the end let us take a end is moving the end is over here the starting portion of the end is over here let me take P1 somewhere over here now it starts its traveling around the cylinder as seen from top the direction of the travel is in this counter clockwise direction it is going in this anti clockwise direction I am looking from top the end is going around the cylinder and after one complete turn it reaches the top. So, we will take P1 over here obviously my point P1 is at this tip of the cylinder it is my point P1. So, after going around by 45 degrees as I am seeing on the top. So, it has gone to 45 degrees it has moved by 45 degrees its climb has to be 10 mm up. So, this is the travel circular travel and this is the vertical travel. This is the travel, circular travel and this is the vertical travel and this one is something to do with angular velocity and this is something to do with linear velocity. So, when the ant has moved from here to here, let us take this as P2 point, ok, we will take this as P0 when the ant has moved to P1 point. So, while looking from top, this point is the starting point, let us minimize P0 after 45 degrees it has reached this point let me mark it as p1 now another 45 degrees the ant has moved in the 45 degrees it has completed an angular turn of 90 degrees it has come over here obviously the ant has to have the vertical motion also as i told is uniform linear as well as angular whatever going around the cylinder is something to do with angular velocity and whatever going up is with linear velocity and both has to be uniform and both has to be equated. So, at P2 it has reached this point as the second end. When the end or when the point traverses another 45 degrees. So, the height obviously has to increase it has reached this point P3 and when it completes 180 degrees over here the point has reached over here P4. That means already it is over here the next point P1 was over here this is P2 this is P3 and P4 is over here. That means the point whatever traveling has covered the front surface of the cylinder. Already the path if the observer is watching here he can see how the ant is moving or how the point is moving. Already we can see the helical path is climbing over a circular surface that is the reason the curve may not be a straight line from here it is not a straight surface even though for representation purpose I have put a straight but the surface is actually being a cylindrical surface it is the curved surface 
it started its journey over it up to P4, up to P4, the end or the point has to move in the back side. So next point is when it covers N the 45, it is reached over here. The next point P5 over here, P6, P7 and the last point. So let me mark this is P5, P6, P7 and obviously P8 or P0 the top point the end for first four divisions it has moved on the front the next four divisions it has moved on the back or according this problem whether it is a point or end just for the example purpose i have taken end the travel of the end whatever you are putting on the cylinder is nothing but the cylindrical helix so after getting all these points what i call it is the angular distance covered at any instance is equal to the linear distance covered the total 360 degrees, I have taken 8 divisions. The total linear travel, I have taken 8 divisions. Every angle is going to cover the equal distance. Already we have got the entire points over here. Connect these points by a smooth curve. First put a thin line connecting all these points. At any point, the curve should not be sharp. Because we are moving on a circular surface, there should not be any sharp point on the curve. This is the first part. And the other part, when it goes on the back side of the cylinder, this is the part. At this point, the curve has to be rounded off. The same thing, if I look from top, these two surfaces, this can be seen. If I look from top, the curved part cannot be seen. It's around the cylinder. Only I can see a circle. While making it dark, I have to make this part, whatever P12, P0, P1, P2, P4 dark the reason is still the end is on the front side of the cylinder either it is an end or a LTK point and when you go after beyond 4 as it vanishes from the front surface the movement of the point or end cannot be seen still after one turn it's going to reach the top point that is an axial distance of 80 mm the distance covered in one turn is called as pitch or lead of the helix. It's the drawing representation. The visible things are shown by dark lines. The invisible things are shown by dotted lines. The